to talk everything about startups. This is the place and time where we talk about startups, about uh, founders' visions, explain their ideas. We talk about products and services, teams and problems. Today our guest is Katrin, right? Katrina. Katrina. Today our guest is Katrina and uh, I met you at Pitch Globally Media, yes, right? Uh, Donovan introduced us some few, few um, events back yeah. and at Pitch Global Media, they give you only two minutes to pitch your company. Here we're going to give you a little bit more time to talk about your company, about your team, uh, your product. Um, we're also going to put on our website and on the notes, on the episode notes, uh, your pitch deck. So um, just tell us a little bit more about your company. Sure. Um, my company is called We Think Inc and we focus on evaluating and teaching critical skills. Critical skills are things that are commonly thought of as 21st century skills, sometimes called social and emotional learning, like communication, critical thought, uh, collaboration, creativity. And our company did research for the last year and a half, uh, which of those skills were the most impactful, measurable, and teachable. And we identified 33 of the most impactful, measurable, and teachable skills and we developed an assessment and training materials for them. Then we designed an end-to-end -end system that would allow students, parents, administrators, and educators to be assessed and to teach those mm. skills to students. We know that we can correlate the data from our critical skills to academics directly. We can predict increases in grades. Okay, that sounds really good. I have two kids and I gotta tell you this is really um, something that resonates with, with what I experience right now because um, I have the feeling that the education system is not at its full potential, uh, let's put it that way, and we have to look for help here and there. Um, so I want to ask you a few questions just to understand where you stand um, in your um, startup development and see uh, what kind of what you're looking for how can you um, motivate investors and make your startup more interesting for investors and other people customers as well so my first question would be um, do you have a team or you work uh, by yourself on the psychometrics behind our adaptive learning engine, mm -hmm. as well as uh, an incredible product developer, um, Reverge Studios, that does a lot of our front-end development and design work. Mm -hmm. um, who am I missing? Randall Fujimoto, who helped out with the game-based learning um, and interactive experiences that compose our training materials, um, and a, a couple of other a couple of other people that have people supported us along yeah. the way in terms of research. Yeah. Do you have a product already or you have, or it's still in... Uh, no, it's still in development right now. We're about three months away from an MVP. Okay. Um, so we're, we're looking at you know, pre-seed funding to finish our product developments and get into our pilot schools. All right. So you're, who is your target customer? Where, how are you going to market your product? Sure. So. Right now, uh, because I've worked with districts and in education for quite a long time, we're starting off with the relationships that I have. So using my relationships, we've gotten endorsed by different cities and districts that have signed letters of intent um, and commitments to use our product. So we'll start piloting there um, and we'll get to charge for you know, those pilot programs, which is awesome. And we can work alongside uh, the University of Kansas as well to pilot our programs. We'd yeah, the letter of intents uh, in, are really good intent, really good that 
you have that because um, you know as an any investor would say um, this is a good asset to have um, potential customers are um, talking to you and right. ready to use your um, pilot or even a real product um, so these uh, letters um, are they with your uh, uh, within the education system only or you also work with um, what I'm trying to say is, is are you only focusing on, on uh, schools or also on after schools and like so the distinction schools? the distinction that that we make um, is districts mm -hmm. uh, which are which is public education then there's the private school market a charter school market mm -hmm. that is occasionally off, um, authorized by like a district, uh, like LAUSD authorizes several charters right in the, yeah. the LA County. So we have letters of intent mostly from districts, so public school districts, mm -hmm. which is great. When you're talking about a district, you're talking about a number of locations and our licensing fee is per location. So that's really awesome for us because it, it just represents uh, a larger target audience um, immediately. We are interested, however, in other after-school programs, and we've been in dialogue with some of the organizations that represent the after-school programs in LA, as well as private after-school programs, and we have one letter of intent from a, a private school. Nice, nice. Um, so how did you come up with this idea? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, it's an interesting story. I have a super unique education myself. Um, I was homeschooled, I was in college super early, and in university consequently super early and studied a bunch of different things, but I tutored and taught all the way through my university experience, and then ended up running a couple of tutoring companies and consulting um, for a, a couple of independent education agencies. And I really realized that what we weren't doing for our students in the US, but it, as it turns out, through my research, I realized this is seriously a global problem, is mm -hmm. focused on the root of the, the issue with our students and then what consequently, consequently becomes a workforce issue. Um, we try to help our kids with tutors, you know, to get better at math or single subjects, right? But it's, it's never about the root problem, which is students aren't really taught how to learn, which is a very human skill, right? Mm -hmm. And it's composed of a lot of things like critical thought, grit, growth mindset, right? The ability to persevere, to be aware of yourself, um, to reflect on what the issue actually is, to plan ahead, right? Those are all what we call non-cognitive or higher order cognitive skills. And our education system isn't really set up to develop those and neither are our families anymore. And we're seeing the result of that globally right now. And it's going to become, it is becoming an economic crisis, which we must address. It's become such a problem and it is so indecent because we're, we're not raising our children to be real humans. So our, our slogan is we need to build better humans, right? Yeah. That's what we really ought to do. And so I, I, uh, five years ago, I started taking these skills and building after-school programs, analog, in school, right? I was there, I trained teachers, we built programs around at the SAT, around eSports, other other material but we focused on these critical skills and one of our pilot schools when we looked back at the standards we rose their state standard by 20.5 percent in under a year that's unheard of we raised sat scores by 300 to 600 points in just a couple of months so it can be done oh it yes absolutely and these just... skills are exactly what allow academic achievement so instead of focusing on hey, let me help your student with math or biology. If you can help your student learn, they can figure out what they, they need yes. to learn in yeah. biology or in math. And that's a better root skill to give them because they can use that over and over and over again. It works for college success, career success, and general well-being. Yeah. So um, once I saw those numbers in my analog programs, I said, oh, well, we have to do this. Um, yeah. I have to turn this into a product because it's, it's not fair. Um, kids need this. We need to give them these skills. Um, and education has been my passion I, since I, I first got be, to experience school. Be, for me, it would be extremely um, hard or scary thing to do because it sounds like a huge task. Uh, I'm glad that somebody <laughs> decided to go ahead and, and do it because there is, in my opinion, there is really, uh, there is real need 
for um, company and services like like your your startup. Um, so um, how do you how do you market your um, your company? How do you market your services, or how do you plan to market your your services to market it? Um, so in a couple of different ways. Um, organically, at first, through our pilot schools, um, we right now would need a lot of manpower in order to reach the amount of pilot schools that, that we can have right now. Um, there's a lot of interest for an obvious reason, which is if we're able to raise statewide standards in grades, um, that increases funding for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it increases, increases the retention of students in schools. So that's a massive value proposition, right? Because we're yeah. able to correlate a new set of data to the data that is the metric for funding right now. And that's important and a core differentiator for what we're saying that we can do with our program, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so initially, we wanna work with the districts that we have in hand and continue to expand organically as we can you know, prove our metrics. Yes. And then what we'd love to do, though, is become thought leaders in the industry, um, be at conferences, obviously, um, and social media marketing, and become a thought and brand leader in, so you in the industry. So you want to market to um, parents? Or yes, we would love parents. to market to parents, and that would be the point of you know really putting ourselves out there on social media, um, improving our web website, and so on and so forth. Because eventually what we'd like to do is, is sell the app direct to the consumer mm -hmm. and allow parents to monitor their child's progress right. through our program um, and get you know, the data on, on their own child and be able to share resources with the parent. I, um, as a parent, I almost feel like um, what I see is um, kids are being scored very often, but the focus for teachers seems to be to get better at this course, not to actually teach kids how to learn or right. teach them skills. And it's kind of um, kind of shifting the, the, the goal. Um, as a teacher, I expect you to teach my kid to know stuff or to know how to learn stuff. But because teachers are measured by school districts or I don't know the whole system is set up like that by how by these numbers and, and they call these numbers achievements for the kids the whole goal is to make sure kids get good grades right. and, and I, there is where I see the disconnection between the need for educating our kids versus having good grades and get funded by the school districts and so on and so on. So my school, my public school is very highly rated, but at the same time I'm not very happy with how they teach and what they teach our kids. So um, I know that there is a problem and I'm again glad that somebody is trying to address it. Um, I don't know if your product is going to match directly or address directly this need, but I'm pretty sure you will find very uh, a lot of customers that um, have the same issue. Um, so going back to startups and investors and getting funded and all that stuff, um, what kind of investment are you seeking right now? And what kind of uh, deal do you offer for investors? Honestly, we're really hoping for uh, a strategic alliance to get us through uh, our build. Mm -hmm. And that's our best bet right now. Uh, we're at an awkward place for venture capital because we don't have a product built. Mm -hmm. um, so our option right now is angel or a strategic alliance. Right, so because you're still building your product and you're looking for probably seed level money. Pre-seed, pre-seed because we don't have a product. So in one sense we have traction in that we've basically sold into several districts, mm -hmm. but in another sense a product hasn't been tried in that market either, so it makes us a lot more high risk. Yeah, um, what kind of deal would you offer to uh, an angel or? Um, anybody that wants to help you? 
We're, we're looking for 750,000 um, and a convertible note or safe. Okay. 700 is a um, reasonable number, 750, because usually that any startup is, is um, safe to seek in that, in that um, range and um, looking for uh, to have in, to be funded for next 18 months or something right. like that, right? So that that is, I guess, the uh, safe range to look for initial funding. Um, here, we're um, I, I ask other um, founders um, is. Uh, startups and entrepreneurs, we have ups and downs and uh, funny stories or uh, humiliating stories. Do you have anything that you can share with us? Yeah, when we, when we first put our programs in inner city schools, I was expecting a much different reception uh, from the students <laughs> than we got. Um, and it was an interesting experience, and um, and I guess it was it was a pretty funny one. And what we realized is they they really needed a different approach um, than than what we had originally set out to do. Um, and we yeah. focused a lot on ownership <laughs> at the end of the day yeah. and responsibility, and and that helped a lot. But that was that was a pivot period for me and how I thought of these skills. And then I. It's when I really learned that I didn't want to just teach the rest of my life. I really wanted to develop a product to solve the problem and help other teachers that were better at it than me. Yeah, usually facing the, the real customers um, changes all your ideas or the way you were thinking about your product and how you want to position it. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why people say, you know, talk to your customers all the time. Um, my experience personally is um, once I talk to my customers, I had to redo my um, product or idea a few times, right? Right. Well, the lucky thing for me is I worked in education so long. Yeah. yeah. So I, I you kind of knew, knew you right, I knew what I was getting into. And, and I know what my biggest challenges will be working with those customers, which is great, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Your customers should be... Happy, smiling. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> All right. Um, well, uh, I hope we will um, meet again in three or six months. Uh, we plan to uh, redo these interviews again just to see how you're developing and follow up your um, uh, startup. Um, if you have any milestones or achievements or product development, um, or product announcements, we will be happy.